Okay, and um, thank you very much, Mike, for that. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me up here. I think what is very key to this whole discussion is the very multidisciplinary nature, of, and that is one of those reasons why the learned societies have all come together, but also one of the reasons all the research councils have come together. This is not one discipline's problem. Um, this is a global problem. Um, I'm head, uh, my job title is um, Head of Agriculture and Food Security, but for the intense purposes of this meeting, I'm the Head of AMR for BBSRC. So, one of the key things in the UK landscape is there are lots of people interested in funding in this area. It's not just one or two research councils. There's medical funding systems, there's government departments such as DEFRA and Department of Health. But this is spanning across medical charities, universities, learning societies, but the public are interested. Innovate UK are interested in the pull through to industry. And they're in international partners who are really interested in working with the UK and the strength of the UK base. So this is really quite a complex but very rich environment that we're all working in. So <clears throat> it's of growing concern, both politically and society. And as Mike said, we have been doing AMR. You know, I've done the portfolio analysis for BBSRC. I know what we've been doing, and I know some of the people here have been doing it. It's not new. But what is new is the opportunity to start coalescing, to try and get extra funding, to try and take a more multidisciplinary approach. This is the first time we've actually got all the research councils on board on a single programme. We've had six, we've had five before. All seven research councils are genuinely interested in this problem and coming at it from different angles. At the moment, collectively, we spend about £25 million a year, and that's on the direct AMR. That's the stuff that's, you know, really is... You look at it and go, yes, that's AMR. But there's lots of, obviously, underpinning work supporting that as well. We had a look at what we're spending it on, and, yes, there is a quite a dominance in terms of looking for lead compounds or alternative lead compounds, alternative approaches. But there is work on diagnostics because it's really important. We can tell if you've got bacteria or virus because then you don't have to um, give an antimicrobial and then you deal with a stewardship issue. There's importance of surveillance, whether it's environmental, whether or not it's in hospital. And understanding transmission dynamics is coming up <coughs> more and more. And interventions, and interventions there can mean medical interventions, chemical interventions, but it also can be societal interventions, trying to persuade doctors not to just shove someone out the door with an antibiotic because it keeps them happy, but to really genuinely challenge the patient and say, can you please you know, appreciate that I don't want to give you antibiotics because you've got a virus. And that's you know, a societal change as well. So there's a big problem. Lots of people are interested in the problem. So what's the solution? Well, I think no one's disagreeing that we need collaborative working. We can't have people working in silos on the problem, working on their own little bit of the problem. We have to have everyone collaborating, and that's different funders collaborating, different researchers collaborating, industry, government collaborating. That means we need to coordinate key disciplines. And what I'm really pleased is by the councils can only do so much in terms of coordinating. You know, we can occasionally have a carrot out there with a bit of funding. Um, but the learning societies are dealing with people day in, day out. And they, again, another form of coordination. And by coordinating it from different angles, hopefully we get a really strong, coordinated and interdisciplinary approach. But it's important we coordinate the research funding. If each funder said, hey, AMR's the latest thing, let's all have a call. Yes, we'd have all calls the same week, and you'd either go mad trying to write the grants or not be able to put them all in. We'd have calls that were overlapping, we'd have gaps. It would be chaos. So another key part of this is that all the funders in the UK have to get together and coordinate. And there's something very important. Um, for those of you who don't know, Sally Davis was a strong driver between the, the five-year strategy for AMR in the UK. And um, I was on the working group for that. And the key thing was we got animals in there, from my perspective. It was an appreciation this is not a hospital um, problem. This is a problem of society and the whole food chain. It's a problem of the environment. It's a problem in many different areas. And it was really good to see that full integration between human and animal veterinary and healthcare in there. So what did the funders decide to do about it? Well, we decided to stick ourselves all together in a room and work out what the problems are. In the usual way, we came up with a nice um, imaginative title. Um, but what we did is we've got the research councils all in the room, all seven research councils. We've got government departments in there and a number of departments, not just the usual suspects. We've got DSTL. We've got who the MOD science arm. We've got um, DFID in the room. We've got the different bits of the um, health agencies, including the ones from Scotland where things are devolved. We've also got the Wellcome Trust in the room. It's people who spend time in Dundee know Wellcome Trust is an important funder as well. 
Um, MRC uh, Managed Secretariat on behalf of all the funders. And we've come up with a sort of common vision. We've tried to get together and try and work out what we need to do together. Um, and where we can add value, because we are doing stuff. So where is the added value in what we're doing? And what we're trying to do is we're trying to coordinate and the funding programmes where we can. Even if one funder decides it's got a bit of money and wants to do something, it speaks to the other funders and makes sure it's coordinated. But we also have a role in raising the profile of AMR with government and having all those people around the room is very useful. You know, this is the membership. You see, you've got people who you'd expect to be on the room and people who aren't. And they, that is quite a lot of people. And that represents an awful lot of political influence and an awful lot of research funding power across the UK. And we've been adding to that as we've gone along. It's not an exclusive list. If we identify another partner who's key, we will add them on. So we identify, yes, we're doing about £25 million worth of research. But can we do a bit more? Could we do a coordinated call? Um, this is the worst time to be doing a coordinated call because we're about to come to the end of the spending review. We haven't got spare money. We've committed all our money to various research programmes and we don't know what our budget's going to be in the future. However, given the importance of this challenge, the councils did scrape every penny they had that was spare together and put it into this programme and that was a major achievement. So last year we had a number of councils commit to this programme. We launched it quite quickly. But one of the other reasons we launched this is to show government we are doing something about it collectively. And if government has some spare cash, which they do occasionally have despite austerity, we are a programme that can get that money and try and build on the research we're doing in future. And that was quite important to us. From a practical point of view, we focused on bacterial resistance in animals and humans. That was to keep some focus. Given the sums of money we had, we didn't want to spread it. There is appreciation that fungal resistance is a problem. There's problems in weeds and plants as well. There are problems outside that area. But the initial focus is bacterial resistance in animals and humans. We came up with four themes, crudely, just to sort of show the diversity of all the different areas. So there was understanding resistance bacteria, which you could call the basic blue skies research type space, the sort of stuff that many of you have been doing, really trying to understand it, but doing it in sort of new ways with new collaborative areas. We wanted to do accelerating therapeutic and diagnostics. So again, bringing in the technology elements. There are people outside the AMR, people outside the microbiology area, who have knowledge about sensors, detection technologies, who can bring to bear to this problem, as well as the people working directly in this area. And something that's, we've called it understanding real-world interactions. Um, that's quite a catch-all because what we're trying to do in that programme is trying to take AMR out of the theory, out of the lab, out of the flask, the Petri dish, and actually work out what's going on in the real world. Now, that might be the real world in hospitals, but it's also the real world in the farm, in the environment, and it's also the real world in the microbiome. So we're going to be launching a call on this soon, and it includes the host microbiome, which is an important part of the gene transfer pathways. So it's trying to look at the more complex systems, um, and that's going to be no um, mean feat. But there's also looking at the behaviour within the healthcare setting as well, and this is something, for instance, that coming at it from the ESRC perspective and the social science issues. That just summarises approximately what those calls are. There is multi-funder interest in all these calls. Not all funders are involved in all of them. BBSRC, for instance, is not doing the behaviour aspect. We're leaving that to ESRC, who are a better place than us to do that. We're involved in the other three, for instance. Um, NERC are involved in the environmental one, and real-world interactions, MRC are involved in all of them. So, just to keep us straight, we set up a steering group. The steering group has people who work across different areas of the problem, whether or not it be medical, um, whether or not it be the animal side, basic research or the more applied research. And we were lucky to get an independent chair from, who's also, incidentally, the chair of um, a European AMR programme as well. So it provides cross-link to what's going on there. And we had two industrialists there too, one coming from big pharma, one coming from small pharma. The reason he's called ex-Cubist, for those of you who don't know, Cubist merged with Merck about three, four months ago. But he's now working for a VL32, which is a startup company, which hasn't got a proper name yet, which is why it's called VL32. Um, but, you know, so we've got those different um, interests, um, trying to keep us right and keep us focused. So what did we do about it? We decided, to do, based on those four themes, we'd have four theme calls. Um, we managed to get 27 million on the table. Um, I would note, actually, um, AHRC's budget, comparatively, four million pounds is an awful lot of money for them. 
And that just shows you how much this problem is challenging. And for those of you who maybe don't work with HRC, is, you know, HRC does design, it does architecture. There's a massive role to play in design. They do visualization. They also do cultural issues as opposed to societal issues. So there's a lot of those aspects pull through. So it's a great interest to them, as well as the more traditional funders like BBSRC and MRC. And this point I made earlier about the scalable approach. What we wanted is something that we could build on. We could say to government, going into the spending review, we can do more AMR. Look at this community we are building. We can do more. Please give us more money because we think we can really address this problem. And we didn't, again, the, you know, the councils, when they come together, we don't stick to particularly one funding model. We work out what the best funding model is. And at the moment, a number of the councils are putting in personal bids for the CSR, and it is likely to be an RCUK bid for collective council work going into the CSR. So, um, you know, it's not going to be, this is not, do not go away thinking we've put £27 million in and we're going to walk away from this. No one is walking away from this programme for a while to come. So, some of these activities have happened. Um, theme one, which is so the basic bioscience, um, we have funded two rounds of what we call innovation grants, and then we funded the consortium grants um, about a month ago. Uh, those are just the, one, the first round of um, small pump priming grants, and I can't remember, I think, yes, the consortium grants, which are bigger, sort of £3 million programmes, are funded there too. And again, to show you the challenge, this has got chemists on it. This isn't the biologist attacking problem, this is the chemist coming in from the drug. The structural biologist is involved in this. There's people coming in from that angle too. This one here is coming at her pastoral interaction perspectives, two very different styles of grants. And actually, a, the committee itself actually said that the animal bits of this were really, really strong, they really liked it. They didn't try and cut it out, didn't try and make it uh, more medically focused. So there's lots of different aspects here that we can bring to bear. Um, so say so those are um, just been announced in the public domain. Um, recently, and then the other consortium grants, I think, are just about to be announced. We've had theme two call, which many of you may have seen and applied for, and this time we had um, three funders on board, and EPSRC said they'll fund on a case-by-case -case basis, and this is more around the technology. And I think from our point of view, for an area that we haven't really been working in and pulling together for long, we've got 82 pump priming proposals and 25 outlines to consortium bids, and those big proposals, they take time to get together. There is a lot of interest here. This is a community. Um, we can build on. And that's why the networking today is important. There are lots of people out there who are tackling this problem and coming at it from different perspectives. And there's a great opportunity to do some really new no, um, novel science here. And as I say, we will know which of these grants get funded. The, in, the um, pump priming grants will know in September and the consortium grants will be filtered at first pass in September and then they'll put full grants in to March next year. So it's going to be a continuous activity. This is the good, uh, a good, exciting one for you to see because no one really knows this is going to be launched yet. We have a theme, but we haven't had a theme call. We're pretty much there with the call text, and we're going to launch this um, just as soon as we get the internal sign-off. Again, we're going to have smaller pump climbing grants to allow people to come together and to do some higher-risk research. But also, we call them medium-sized grants here. We're not looking for large consortium grants here because the money available in this call doesn't really merit it. Um, but we are looking for sort of what we say normal £1 million pound sort of um, 500k type grants. But this is looking at a lot of areas. It is looking at the outdoor environment, but it's also looking at the, the microbiome aspect of that too. So when you see this call, it is NERT BBSRC, MRC, it is host microbiome, it's environment, it could be all of those things. Have a look. There's almost certainly a lot of it will apply to people who are sitting in this room. I say that will come out in the next few weeks. Um, we're probably going to have a town meeting to discuss this in London in September. So it's not going to be rushed, this call. You'll have time to sort of digest and think about partnerships. And our um, colleagues in ESRC are currently working up the understanding of the behaviour um, call, and hopefully something will come out about that more this year. But another reason for staggering them, we didn't want to saturate the community, we want to constantly have a drip feed to government to show them there's different things coming at different angles, so that there's AMR in the news every couple of months. And this is something really quite deliberate. And we're working with the learning societies on this to try and make sure it doesn't just go away. If we put all this money in one big call, we might have a lot of press one week, Six months later, no one will be talking about it again. If we can keep activity going, it keeps it in the minds of politicians. Just to note, though, there are other funding sources. So this is a joint call, but we're doing as much as I can to fund this through other ways. For those of you who don't know, the Newton Fund is a wonderful thing for scientists and the research councils. Um, the government wants to spend some of its ODA money, which is the Overseas Development Aid money, um, in science. ODA money has been linked to GDP. 
It's a government commitment, and the current government is also committed to that. That means every time the economy gets better, they've got more money, and they have to work out ways to spend it. Luckily, one of the ways they identified was what they call the Newton Fund. Um, various people have got this Innovate UK British Council, but the research councils have got a good healthy chunk of money from this. As long as you're working with countries on the Newton list, of which there are about 15, including India and China, Brazil, you know, there are some leading countries here as well as more developing countries, um, there's a chance for money. So we've had one call already, which was led by MRC. There is another call that's under discussion at the moment with the Chinese, and MRC, e ESRC and BBSC involved in that. So again, if you've got collaborators in China who are working on AMR, or people you know you've been meaning to phone but never got around to it, now will be a time to try and touch base with them to see if they're interested in doing possible collaborations because there'll be some money coming along stream um, shortly on that. With also, for those of you who aren't aware, JPIs is a European funding mechanism. Um, there's a JPI in AMR, uh, which is, again, pretty much the same remit, human and animals. Um, that's already had one call. Money's quite tight at the moment, but we're hoping to have further calls and further coordination. So, again, yet another area to fund it and hopefully have an ear in it. Um, on the back of that. And also the IMI, for the um, people in Dundee certainly are aware of the IMI, um, there's Research Council representation too, and we're trying to steer some of the funding streams into new areas. And one of the things that um, I might mention Jim and Neil's report as an economist, one of his first reports he was brought out was trying to look at the funding model. And he says basically the funding model for pharma is broken. It's too high risk for pharma to get involved in a drug where paracetamol is so cheap they're not going to make any money out of it. So we need a new type of funding partnership with the pharmaceutical industry to fund bacterial research. And that is a beautiful um, way of delivering sort of public-private pharma science research centres, which many of you people in the room have had experience with, so we'll have to see what develops in that. Um, I'll just leave you with this in terms of the contacts. There's a contact in... SDFC haven't got a contact on here at the moment, but they are actually quite interested in the diagnostics and technology side. Um, I don't want you to go away thinking, right, we've just got some money in the call. I'm not a bit busy over the next three months. Never mind, I won't worry about it. You will see this in the next spending review. This is not going to go away for the next five years. Politicians might get bored in five years' time, but this is the crest of the wave over the next five years. This is the momentum. There's a lot of public attention. Jim O'Neill was commissioned by the Prime Minister himself to do this economics report. Um, you know, and actually, if you, um, for those of you, it's worth a read. He actually worked out more people are going to be dying of AMR than cancer by 2050. Now, that's the sort of thing that makes people stand up and look at how much money are we putting into cancer research, how much money are we putting into AMR. But anyway, thank you for your attention. I was, sorry, I mentioned the website, but people, I don't know if people are aware, if you type in cross council um, thematic call on AMR, you will find that the MRC are hosting it. But we do have the website with a lot of details about these calls, what we're doing. Um, information about the AMR Funders Forum.